All right, today we're talking about intake air temperature sensors. And uh, uh, intake air temperature sensor, along with uh, like a coolant temperature sensor, is what we call a thermistor. It's a thermistor is basically a resistor that changes its resistance based on the temperature. And you can see this is one type of thermistor. You see the actual resistor inside of there? This is off of an older vehicle. This is the intake air temperature sensor right here. It's just the air intake air temperature sensor. This is off of the uh, intake plenum. This is off of a newer Japanese engine. Those down there are the mass airflow sensor. Let's count the pins. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Three of them are four. Three pins are for the mass airflow sensor. See that? Two are for that thing right there. See that? That's the intake air temperature sensor. So this unit right here, and this unit can be found on Subarus, Toyotas, I believe Nissans. It's a Denso, and Denso makes it for all these different Japanese manufacturers. That right there is the intake air temperature sensor. That's two of the wires. And the two of the wires that go to this uh, thermistor, which is an air intake air temperature sensor. It's an intake air temperature sensor, but it, it's a thermistor. It changes, temp it changes its resistance based on its temperature. And this one in particular, for this model, that can be found on a different... A lot of different makes, models, probably a bunch of different Toyotas, probably a bunch of Subarus, and uh, maybe even Hondas. That, it's one, two, it would be these two right wires, these two right pins. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay? So, this is a mass airflow sensor, and it is also an intake air temperature sensor. So I'm just going to compare the two a little bit and I want to show you a little bit of demonstration. And I also want to uh, explain. So here's the computer over here. I don't bring a pen or anything. The computer's over there. There's a resistor inside of the computer. It sends out 5 volts. The 5 volts comes into here and it's grounded through the other wire. So 5 volts and then it's grounded. Right here. So if you disconnect this plug, you're going to have 5 volts on one wire, and then you're going to have ground on the other wire. When you plug it in, it's going to drop to like 4.5 or something like that. Anytime a, a, a thermistor or anything like that's plugged in, anything that has a 5 volt reference, you want to plug it in. It wants, it does, it's not good for the signal to be 5 or 0. So in this case, when you plug it in, it's going to be like a 4.5 or something like that. When the temperature rises on that signal wire, the one that's being sent from the computer, that's being monitored. So here's a resistor over here. And then 5 volts is sent through that resistor. And because there's no current flow, it's just 5 volts. And then we plug it in, and there is current flow because it's flowing through this resistor and coming out to the ground. And then what happens is... When it heats up, here's heat coming in here, like from this heater right here. It heats it up, the resistance actually goes down. If you think of it as like of a, a, a door or something, the door would be opening wider, allowing the electricity to flow. What's going to happen is, on this leg, the voltage is going to go from 4.5, 4 if it's connected, 4.5, and it's going to drop to three, to two, to one. And the computer sees if it has one volt on that signal wire, it knows that it's hot right here. And the computer knows one volt equals hot. Two volts equals almost hot. Three volts equals warm. 
4 volts equals about room temperature. 4.5 is basically almost cold. So the computer sees that. It represents the 4.5 it's a colder temperature, the 1, the 0.5, that's a hot, really hot temperature. But in order to check uh, something like the intake air temperature sensor, all you would have to do is you want to disconnect it, and you want to check on the plug. You want to see 5 volts here, and then you want to see a ground here. If you have 5 volts here, you have a ground here, then you know basically the circuitry for the computer is good, the sensor ground is good, the computer is sending out the 5 volts, you see the 5 volts when you disconnect it, it's good. And then you plug it in, and then if you see any, if you see 5 volts still, then it's bad. That means this thing's probably broken. There's wires, you can see the wires right there. The connection. It, you're going to see 5 volts if that's broken right there, because there's going to be no con continuity. It's not going to cross across here. There's going to be no voltage drop whatsoever because the 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 uh, resistor is not part of the equation. So let's check this one. This is the uh, older type, and there's just two. You'll you'll have like a five volt reference with the resistor, and then you're going to have the ground. And it's what it's doing is it's coming in the five volts, and it's going through one resistor from the computer, and it's sending out the five volts potential 5 volts and it comes in here and it's dropping some of the voltage so you're gonna read about it when you disconnect it you're gonna read 5 volts and then when you plug it in you're gonna read a 4 point something volts and then once the temperature rises it's gonna drop voltage it's gonna go from 4.5 to 4 to 3 to 2 anyways but w right now what we're doing is we're, we're checking the uh, the resistance we disconnect it and we're checking it we just want to make sure that this thing is working and I want to show you the difference basically this is a older this is off like a Mitsubishi engine so we want to make sure it's connected oh, oh I just want it's on a, a ohms scale right there let me see you got 5.42 okay And I'm going to say it in case you can't really see it real good. It's hard to get to perfectly. These terminals are hard to get to. There we go. Okay, you see that? 5.4. Now I'm going to take this terminal, I'm going to I'm going to put it to the light. I don't know if you can see that, but it's dropping. It's 5.12, 5.06, 5.04. Now we're at 4.95. It's dropping, 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 dropping. In other words, if this was a door, it would be opening more and more and more, allowing more electricity to flow through it. The hotter it gets, the more it flows through it. Now watch when I take it away from the light. I'm sorry if you couldn't see that. Now watch why I took it away from the light. Look how I blow on it. Let me zoom in. That was... No, let me plug it in. Watch, watch when it cools down. I'm blowing air on it. You see the resistance is going up. In, or, in other words, the door is closing to not allowing enough. If there is the 5 volts applied to it, it would allow less. So this is for the older one, like that. So, shit, sorry. So, we're at about room temperature. There we go. 5.6 for this one, right here. It's a Mitsubishi off of a, a, a Chrysler. It's the, uh, what is it? 2.5, six under, okay? Intake air temperature sensor. 
Now here is this one right here. Okay. Here, here is also the intake air temperature sensor. Now you can measure it from two different places. Here's one leg of it right here. And here's the other leg. Okay. You want to be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to damage it. Let me get it right here. And let me get it right here. One point one. Let me get this one closer to the heat. It's dropping slow. This one's dropping a lot slower. But it's dropping. See it dropping? I'll leave it here for a couple more seconds. I'll get it closer to the light. See it dropping? Dropping, dropping, dropping. So that right there, so what, what I was doing right there was I was going across here and across here, okay? So I was checking right here between here and here, and we were, this is the scale I'm at right there, by the way. 20 kilo ohms. Yeah, 20 kilo ohms. That's the scale I'm at right there. Anyways, but like I said, so I went across here and went across here. But like I said, these two on the right, this one and this one, are also the ones that connect to the intake air temperature sensor on this type of uh intake air temperature sensor slash mass airflow sensor so let's see if I'm correct you could check right there I'm gonna I'm gonna probe those two I'm gonna probe those two terminals I might I'm off screen right now but I'm I'm gonna probe them it's hard to get to them inside of here You can't see I'm on those two though. One, two. Let me show you. See I'm on those two? I'm on those two right there. I'm on these two right here. I'm on this one all the way to the right and this one right next to it. So on this type right here where it plugs in, where it plugs in, it's these two on the right. That one all the way to the right and the one right next to it. That's for the intake air temperature sensor. That's for this unit right here. And I know people on there are cleaning this, saying cleaning the mass airflow sensor. I mean, this, these two inside here are the, for the mass airflow sensor. This is for the intake air temperature sensor. So... So that can help you for diagnostics because this this one there's five R one two three four five and these two on the right over here from this connector are for the intake air temperature sensor the other three are for the mass airflow sensor for this Denso unit like this okay so you saw on both units they work the same they're both thermistors when they heat up whether it be by this uh, hair blower 
or by the light when it heats up the resistance goes down so what happens is the computer sends out through a resistor and then 5 volts right here 5 volts comes in and then it comes out like this so you unplug it you want to check one of these intake air temperature sensors you want to unplug it and then you want to uh, check for 5 volts and then you want to check over here for a ground and then you want to plug it in and then you want to see the voltage drop on, from 5 volts to 4 point something or whatever you could start the vehicle you could let it warm up and you're gonna see it start dropping a little bit depending on the temperature of the vehicle it's gonna drop from 4.5 to 4 and it's gonna go down or you could do like I did you can put it on ohm scale and you could probe against these two right here one two and then you could put it I, I could put it on this blow dryer right here or I could put it against the light and you wanna see the resistance drop and then most of the time, like if you come over here and you see basically you see that, that means it's there's no continuity at all. That's continuity with no resistance basically. So you want to see that. You want to see that there is continuity. You want to see that's their resistance. And on this one, it's different than the other one. There's six or almost six, six what kilo ohms or whatever. Okay. So you see anything other than that on, on what you want to see, then you you know the resistor is out. If you see this, when you probe across it, you know something is broken in between here. It could be inside this unit. If you see that and you're doing it properly on ohm scale, this unit's bad. Replace it. And it's the same thing with this one too. If you come across this one right here and you probe against these two right here, and you see that right there, then it's bad. You want to see at least some kind of resistance. And I'm trying to give you an idea of what type of resistance you'll be seeing across these different units. And you see it's about the same. One point, that's probably for my body. I have some resistance in my body. You want to see about... One... 1.13, 1.12. So if you have like a, a a Toyota, I mean any of these Japanese made engines, they all use Denso. So you want to check there, you want to see, okay, the resistor, the thermistor is good. Okay, and then you want to come to these two wires on this particular type of unit. And you're going to see, and this is another way to identify what is, what wires on these uh, dual uh, sensors is for the intake air temperature sensor. You want to know, okay, which one is for the air intake air temperature sensor? Well, you can come right here and probe across those and you're going to see 1.12 or 1.2 or whatever. And then you probe across these and until you see that 1.12, 1.2. And you're going to know those two wires are for the intake air temperature sensor. And in this particular case, it's these two on the right. So it'd be this one and this one, this one and this one right here that one and that one right next to it so and I'm gonna show you uh, the type of code you would get if like for example if uh, for this one if this was a uh, out of the um, picture the type of code you're gonna get so that's what you would see you would see uh, intake air temperature sensor circuit high if it was broken, it, it sees a, a circuit high because if it was broken anywhere in between, the ground was broken, the sensor was broken, or anything, it's going to be high because it's sending out that 5 volts. It's sending out the 5 volts. So what you would have is it would be sending out the 5 volts, and if anything, the ground is broken, the sensor itself is broken, anything is broken, what's going to happen is... Uh, you're going to have the 5 volt potential, it's going to see the 5 volt, it doesn't want to see the 5 volts. So if it was shorted, it would be low. So in other words, this would be a bad ground, this would be a bad sensor, or this would be a bad connection at the, uh, the signal wire. Thanks for watching guys.